now. Jacob Stockdale won't forget 2018 in a hurry. The Young Wingers tries propelled Ireland to the Grand Slam and then a moment of magic helped humble the All Blacks in Dublin. A place in Irish rugby folklore is already assured and as Gabriel Clark reports, one Ulster town couldn't be more delighted. Hi, Jacob, when he was small, used to joke and say, I want to play rugby for Ireland someday. And he used to go, yes, yeah, son, right. Like all kids, he had that dream, and I suppose he held on to it. It's a strange sort of experience. It's just been step after step after step. And Stockdale in space. Stockdale scores. Hectic, mad, um, but fun. West of Belfast at Lurgan Rugby Club, they're not easily impressed. Until the subject turns to the Ulster boy made so good so suddenly. Jacob Stockdale is a phenomenon. In last year's tournaments, he broke the all time try record. Ireland won a Grand Slam. And then Stockdale inspired an historic win over New Zealand. It's been amazing. If you'd said to me a couple of years ago that that would have happened, I wouldn't have believed you. There was a lot of times where I he was like, rugby's not for me. I didn't see myself as a good rugby player, and I was about maybe 14 or 15, and I fell behind everybody in terms of size. He grew up all of a sudden. He also really disciplined himself to, to put in the training. He was bigger, he was faster, he was stronger. He has that attitude that if you don't get it right the first time, well, you learn from it and you do it again, and you get it right the next time. I just feel incredibly lucky that I did keep playing and I did decide to pack it in because I love playing rugby and if I wasn't playing for Ireland, I'd be playing for Lurgan. His impact has resonated most in Northern Ireland, but his province, Ulster, and of course his club. Lurgan is a town that needs its narrative changing. Unfortunately, Lurgan has had a, a dark history as well as a very proud history. The 70s and 80s, the town was decimated by car bombs and sectarian murders. This area that we live in has been known as the Killing Triangle. Lurgan obviously was pretty infamous during the Troubles, and obviously there's a lot of combat that went on during that time and hasn't really lost that stigma. We were lucky enough that Jacob and his family have taken us on board. They are really a part of the fabric of the club. Rugby's in the blood, his grandfather played to a high level. Dad wasn't bad, but there was another calling. I work as the coordinating chaplain in McGabry Prison, which is Northern Ireland's high security prison. And I was approached to see if Jacob would come in to be involved in a scheme to encourage prisoner confidence and well-being. My visit into the prison made me appreciate that the guys in there are just normal guys, you know, who just have made a mistake somewhere down the line and trying to correct their lives. Jacob invests a lot into young people, the childhood he's had, how things have come together for him, and he would see that as something that he would want other people having the same opportunity for. He's proving it with action in Lurgan, leading a peace project, using rugby in a town still blighted by contested land and no-go areas. There is still a divide. Some pockets of Lurgan are in the top 10 most socially deprived areas in the country. Two weeks ago, he went into four local schools. He's actually been responsible in enrolling over 200 of those kids for a Peace Four programme. I'm thrilled that Jacob has used his exposure because he realised that even at the age of 22, a lot has been given to him. We're really the only professional sport where there's a team in all of Ireland. In every other sport, you have to choose one or the other. Rugby, you don't. People look at that and, and they realise that it's not just a sport that's only for one side of the community, and I think that's massively important. He may come across as quite relaxed and easygoing, but Jacob at the same time takes life very seriously, and he's very determined to be the best in the world. I have no doubt that there's a load more Irish tries to come in them. So, Brian Risk, watch out. Jacob's coming for your record. You've brought the Six Nations trophy back to Lurgan. What chance the World Cup? <laughs> I don't know, that's a dangerous question to be asking now, but uh, if we win the World Cup, I'd say the, the Cup will definitely be coming to Lurgan at some point, yeah. It's 
Jacob Stockdale, a remarkable young man. I'm not sure what he'll make of all those home videos that uh, he's now shared <laughs> with the world. Uh, and he's coming after your record, and Lawrence just said, never mind the try record, he's a better dancer than you. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be hard. He's got that a celebration really worked out already. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Crouch wants his dance back. <laughs> uh, he is, you know, uh, clearly a, a young man with a, a social conscience, just mm. 22 years of age, and, and already recognises the role that he can play in his community. It's, it's impressive. It's incredible. Like, he's had an, a, a phenomenal two and a half years since he broke onto the scene, and if he continues with his current strike rate, he'll have that record by the time he's about 26. Uh, <laughs> it's been so prolific. Um, you know, he's, he, every time he gets the ball, it looks as though he's got to beat someone. Uh, he's definitely turned himself into one of the most exciting wingers in world rugby at the moment. Um, and he's very humble and just going about his business. But I think what's most impressive from that piece is his understanding his social conscience and, and remembering where he's come from and, and, and understanding what uh, the development of Lurgan Rugby Club has meant to him in putting him in a position to play for Ireland and going back into the community. And um, you know, They've had some very difficult times. I did a, a documentary uh, up there during the summer last year and you know, there's, still, um, there's still a lot of divide and only players with big profiles at, at a very young age like that have the, have the ability to impact uh, and, and bring that you know, social consciousness um, to the people. Because rugby can play such a key role in communities in all sorts of ways. Yeah, and I, and I think from personal experience, like rugby's played by good people, but it's also supported by really good people as well. Um, and when, on my personal case, when you know when I was uh, at a hate crime attack, I didn't ask for support, but the rugby community came together, players, international teams, ball aces, um, and it, and I tell you what, rugby is really good at, I believe, in being proactive. It's not reactive to situations like what Jacob has done there. He decided on his own account at a young age to go out and be proactive to make a difference, not reactive to something that's happened. Yeah, and his father clearly, with the work he does within the prison, is right at the heart of the community. And it would be easy for his son just to take a back seat. Actually, I'm just going to get on with my rugby career. But he recognises what he's already done, as Brian said, in a very short space of time. He's a real role model. And we know that the values of rugby can really help, particularly in socially deprived areas, uh, for people to turn their lives around. So uh, there's a lovely, lovely piece there with Jacob. And can you imagine what it would be like at Lurgan Rugby Club if he goes back to the World, <laughs> World Cup trophy? They what should you have you there dancing if you do about it. <laughs> <laughs>